This next chapter in discussing the esoteric secrets of disclosure is going to be unconventional, as this lesson is the account of the arrival of the Martians on Earth on the continent of Antarctica, exactly how I received it. You may ask yourself, why bother sharing such a distant aspect of our Earth history? Well, history repeats itself, and when we do not understand our ancient past, we succumb to the same mistakes that we suffered then. The solution to facing the darkness of today is thus the deep understanding of exactly how it manifested in earlier periods. Only when armed with the reality of our past can we properly confront the problems of today. I want to be clear that we are building on the last two lessons, which were 1. The reality that the Earth was a more etheric and even astral form in our distant past. In our deep past, the Earth was not solid and therefore was not subject to the same material laws we have today. It was an environment very distant in nature to what we have now in our present day reality. This difference in quality often causes the mind to reject it and reject the history of this period. Of course, unless it is trained to perceive beyond the material level of perception. Two, the second lesson was that humanity was not only a different density at that period and at a different developmental stage, but that humanity was also visited, or rather interrupted, by certain beings from Mars at a very specific point in the past earthly development. This period was at the end of the Lemurian Epoch, moving into the Atlantean Epoch. So, this account of our very ancient past takes place when the Earth was not yet solid, not as solid as it is today. It was not yet materialized into the form we now have, and thus the listener must understand that certain things were possible then that are not now, and certain things happened that are only perhaps now only a very distant knowing. However, when one becomes aware of the truth of our past, they will begin to see the recapitulations of it, or the repetitions of it, everywhere around them. Once we see the truth, we begin to see it around us. And most of all, once we know the patterns of darkness in our past, we will not be manipulated by them in the present. Included in this account are spiritual scientific dynamics that have to do with the spiritual life and evolution of the Earth, how planets and human beings evolve in the solar system, and of course how human beings evolve on Earth. I am not asking you to believe this, just that you listen with an open mind. During the Mars cycle of development in the solar system, a great split occurred in the human stream in the cosmos. Before that point, the life wave, or the migration of souls from one world to another in our solar system, was intact. There was no ability to defy or leave the life wave. Humanity could not rebel against nature or God. Upon death, the human being was subject to a series of transformations, and their soul would naturally enter the organic life wave, and thus they would take on a planetary incarnation that was needed for their existence, for their experience. However, during the Mars cycle of development in the solar system, something different began to occur. 
the solar system began sinking deeper and deeper into matter as part of its natural progression. And by the time what we know as the planet Mars came about, a certain condition existed on the planet where humanity could be independent enough to have the very beginnings of an eye or a rudimentary kind of awareness and objective mental abilities, but not enough to be fully self-aware. Upon developing this rudimentary level of awareness, they, those on Mars, seemed to use it to channel all of their efforts into controlling the natural world. It did not occur to them to channel that capacity into understanding the intricacies of their own behavior. In this way, Mars was the home of the first magicians. It was a playground for man and machine. All things to do with material development and control first happened on Mars. At first, the inventions were useful and served humanity. But over time, they took on a life of their own, a personality of their own, and they began to control man. Their inventions and their machines began to control them. The first phase of this began with controlling the weather, controlling nature. This behavior led in the lowest kind of elemental beings and forces, beings that had not yet been known in this universe, beings that were behind a kind of dark mirror. But the dark magicians believed that if something existed, it could be controlled it could be brought under their power, under their will, and that they could figure out how to do it. They, in turn, could master that power and become more godlike themselves. And so, evil was not understood, and these forces from behind this black veil were seen as neutral, as no different than any other force of nature. You see, all darkness comes on the back of light. It sneaks in through what has already been created in the light for the light. And only the true magician can sense the difference between these two forces, between good and evil. Thus, after the light, darkness always comes. And so, these Martians were absolute magicians of the material world. They assumed that the spirit was automatically there, that the spiritual plane would automatically follow their mind, that they could not fall, that they could not fail, that they were, in fact, gods the gods of nature. This is the mindset that has pervaded the earth. And it did not begin on the earth. And it will not end on the earth. This was a necessary stage in human development and occurred in what we would consider an etheric realm compared to our material density. And so, because of this, Mars could not become dense enough or create enough pressure for these souls to have a personal realization. Mars could only create enough density to have half the level of awareness possible on Earth. And thus, the large majority of souls that incarnate not only pass through Mars before taking a life on the Earth, they carry their prior consciousness and memories that happened on Mars. 
They carry this specifically to heal upon their life on earth. But we will return to the purpose of this recollection, which is the creation of a rebellious stream of humanity, or what we call the anti-stream. We use the term human to describe the people of Mars and the people of Venus and other planetary schemes because their being from another developmental scheme of the system does not make them inhuman. What makes a being inhuman is when God is betrayed. Humans from other planetary realms are indeed human. They just have a slightly different density according to the laws of their particular planetary scheme. And, in many cases, lack certain organs that the Earth scheme requires for life. Beings from other planetary schemes in our solar system are the prototypes of the Earth human. Namely, the Venusian scheme is the prototype of the Earth human. Thus, to perceive beings from other planetary spheres as alien is a fallacy, and it should be observed that as a law, all planetary schemes in our solar system create the human form. The human form is evolved accordingly on each scheme, each development playing into the next until the Atman, or the solar human form, is created. In this way, the human form is created by different planetary incarnations, one after the other, and the form that is created on, say, Mars or Venus, is carried into the life wave and impulse of the next planet to take life. In this way, the human form is the celebration of the sun and the official vehicle of the cosmos of the solar system. Each organ, each variety of form, is due to massive developments in other developmental schemes of this solar system. We should, at this time, mention another fallacy that comes from the general collective Martian delusion, which is that complete beings from other star systems can enter the Earth. That is not possible. All beings from other star systems must enter through our star, through the Sun, or through Christ. All beings from other star systems enter as a soul, and there is a process to take form or develop a human body or enter the life wave. But these are not aliens. This process is speaking about certain exalted incarnations. What people are calling aliens are forces from the anti-stream that were summoned here at the time of Mars and are generally connected esoterically to the Mars wave. They are inhuman, half-human, and always in some way deformed in appearance. These are the forces that were summoned from behind the Black Veil, and they seek form here. Now returning to the reality of this rebellious anti-wave that was realized fully on Mars. We must reveal something that may explain events in the past, but also the movements and ideologies of the Dark Brotherhoods today. The Dark Magicians of Mars, for the first time, had the capacity to defy nature through technology, and in fact, defy their own death. This religion around defying their own death became a source of immense egoic power for them. They began to fixate and develop ceremonies not on the full process of death and rebirth or of resurrection, but on defying death, denying the spiritual realities of death. 
It is this belief that truly made them feel like gods. In their sickness and inability to harmonize with nature, they destroyed Mars. They destroyed their world. Ironically, this is the biggest failure that a human being can achieve. But before their world was destroyed, they used what little power they had to come to the Earth, which was the next planet to swing to life in the solar system school, or in the life wave of the solar system. It was the development of technology that allowed the Martians to do this. If they did not have this technology, they would be subject to the natural death process and serve time in certain lower realms that have a mirroring effect on the soul. It would be painful, but it would allow them to potentially become more self-realized in their next natural incarnation. Now, what we are speaking of is when the Earth was in a different stage of life, a different level of density. This must be squarely understood. This invasion of these dark and deluded Martian beings happened before the Earth reached its deepest level of density during the Atlantean Epoch. During this period, the Earth was in fact two bodies. One was denser and hanging lower, and the other aspect of the Earth was of a much higher vibration and hovering above the lower aspect. The higher Earth was corded to Venus, and the lower Earth was perceivable to the Martians. If one were to look back clairvoyantly at this time, they would see two entirely different streams, two different worlds, two different Earths that would one day remerge into one. You see, in a planet's life, it divides into two streams in order for the soul waves to participate in certain transformations before their next life cycle, and also so that different planetary spheres in the system receive certain waves of life and energy from the Earth. It is a kind of fertilization and exchange that is only viewable through higher perception and not understandable if the Earth is seen strictly as a material body. One can imagine that this event is similar to how the human soul leaves the body upon death to merge with the higher spheres, or the astral body leaves the physical body during dream time. This exact thing occurs for the planet upon its death or upon the end of its cycle, thus during the perleia of any planet only the lower physical form is dead. The higher form is very active and actually being imprinted with the life and wisdom of the higher spheres. This gives the planet its necessary initiation to begin a new life in the images and energies that it is receiving from merging itself with the other planetary spheres in the system in this astral phase. So the spirit of the earth passes through the solar system just as the soul does and it becomes anointed with the current wisdom, movements, karma, and developments of its brother and sister spheres. As the spirit of the earth passes through the sun, it begins to gain density and returns or remerges with its shell, its body that remained in the lowest key or in the physical plane. The spiritual essence of the earth returns to the physical body of the earth, its lowest material expression. We mention this process because this means that while the spirit of the earth is traveling and going through initiation and transformation, there is a physical corpse 
that is left in its place in the material plane. And so, in reality, we have a shell, a corpse, and we have the soul and essence of the earth as two different things during this period of time. If one were to visit the earth during this time, they are not truly of the earth. They are on the corpse of the earth. They would in fact be outside the development of the earth. These Martians, as they refuse to surrender to God's will and pass or die within the parameters of their planetary scheme, began a wholly external wave or a movement in the cosmos and within humanity that is no longer within their life wave, within the life wave of the solar system. They use their technology to escape their death and the destruction of their world. And thus, they are out of time. They are out of rhythm with life and bound to the horrid creatures of darkness they summoned for their survival. But we must say that technology in the Martian realm is not as we know it today. It was, as mentioned, an etheric realm compared to our physical plane. And they were able to travel here through producing the equivalent of what would be a nuclear blast. The way in which this is done in that level of creation, in the etheric level of creation, is that it creates a temporary black sun or black hole. This black hole cannot be controlled and follows a hidden circuitry of creation. As Mars at this time was at the etheric level, they were able to lower in density through this kind of esoteric blast. But the black sun force can only move down in density. It can only move deeper into matter. It cannot move upward. The force that uplifts and moves upward is the white sun force, which is to humanity the Christ impulse. We must reveal that the black sun force on Venus was a holy force and was not produced through a nuclear blast. On Venus, the mother of both Mars and Earth, the black sun occurs in a natural fashion and the priestesses are trained to enter into the black sun. And this is the core of all Persephone myths. The black sun forces on Mars are against the natural order. The male form can only travel in this way naturally if they align with white sun forces. That's what we are describing to you about the male cult of the black sun is an abomination. It is something that if one wishes to evolve and be in harmony, they would not do. But moving from the Mars realm to the Earth realm, it was possible using this Martian black sun nuclear technology. In this way, a kind of occult technology was created and used to defy God, to defy the natural order, and even defy and insult their own existence. An unnatural stream was created linking the Earth and Mars at a time when the Earth was dead, while it was in a death cycle. On the tail of this event, or with the Martians, came elemental forces that would not naturally exist on the Earth. These unnatural elemental forces were harnessed to achieve their escape. And so, now we have something that had not happened thus far in our solar system, 
in the human story. The fallen masculine impulse on Mars had created a wave that rivaled the natural life wave through the extreme and unchecked development of the will. Human beings that were not technically of the Earth, that should not naturally be on the Earth, were now on the Earth. And because the Earth contains the essence of Mars, and Mars the essence of Venus, it was possible for them to exist, though in an unusual way. Certain organs were not developed that would be needed for survival, and as a general law, it was understood that no human form can live on a planetary sphere unless they merge their stream with the feminine consciousness, or the feminine form, on that planet. This meant that these men from Mars had to merge with the female forms on the planet Earth in order to survive and create an incarnational path should they die. The female form on the planet was not the Earth human. It was not Eve. It was an ape human. These ape people were the result of the fallen race of Lemuria. They represented humanity's fall backwards into the animal kingdom. Not all of humanity, but a portion of humanity that did not pass the Lemurian phase of development, or they did not pass the Lemurian initiation and evolved backwards into the animal kingdom. Thus, we have actually a kind of balance that occurred. The fallen Mars men who were hyper-technological or hyper-masculine in orientation found themselves with the fallen feminine impulse of the Earth. The human apes were the result of the inability to master the developing feminine forces of the Earth. This is illustrated by the ruling power of Venus and Moon during Lemuria, and also that the imbalanced feminine draws human consciousness backwards and downwards. The imbalanced masculine leads humanity too far forwards or too futuristic and too far upwards by comparison. Thus, the female forces when in balance, draw humanity downwards and backwards into the animal kingdom, while the male forces, when imbalanced, draw humanity too upward and forward into a hyper technological state, what we would understand in our time as a transhuman state. So, the Mars men, these dark magicians, did not actually interact with humanity. They never interacted with the genuine human beings of the Earth. They interacted with a kind of animal human that was on the Earth at the time that was the result of the fallen consciousness during the Lemurian Epoch. They interacted with the fallen line of human beings that was, in fact, no longer human. But we must be clear, the souls that are of this particular impulse this fallen Mars impulse, believe that these ape creatures were the humans of the Earth. Their memory and experience tells them this, and since they have no capacity to discern otherwise, they do not perceive the reality of their situation. They then developed an alternative origin myth that states exactly what we have shared. This origin story has been kept in the deepest recesses of their orders. This myth is the alien god myth, and Eve as an ape. Since this group has had millions of years to proliferate and indoctrinate, this false and satanic origin myth has made its way into every civilization that was created. And at about this time, it is always attempted to be passed off as the truth of human creation. In their story, 
the mighty angels, or in our materialist age, aliens, come to this animalistic world to find only apes or ape people. They, being the heavenly gods with space travel, raised these sad beings into the human kingdom. They saved them from their beastly destiny. Without the space gods' direct interference, there would be no civilization. There would be no humanity. They, the space gods, are the evolutionary impulse. They are the force that brings life into its next step. They, in this way, claim to be Christ, the evolutionary force in humanity. But this is a delusion, a delusion that has been carefully seeded and is currently poised to become a new religion. It is a delusion because it is not true. The human being of the earth, in the form of Adam and Eve, were within the risen stream. They were in the core of the higher earth. And during this time, the form was being properly evolved for the new epoch, which was the Atlantean epoch. You see, the human form or the template of the developing human being rises into the Venusian plane with the earth. Here it is preserved and etched with its next image. This is likened to the etching of the seed atom. Thus, the true human form of the earth is held above the corpse of the earth and prepared to appear at the correct time in the next epoch. The corpse of the earth or the lower earth will go through certain cycles related to its fallen reality. So in truth, the human being of the earth was in a different realm during this period, when the Martians or fallen lords of Mars were interfering. The higher humans were destined to merge back with the earth as the true Atlantean human beings in the true Atlantean form. This reveals the error and the problem. The Martians believe they are the Venusians. They believe they are the higher angels. They believe they created humanity and all human civilization. They believe it is their form, them, that is the human element. They believe they are the initiating human element on Earth. And they believe they did this through genetically merging with apes. On the other hand, the other stream, the genuine natural stream of Earth humanity, competes with that ideology. The true stream of earthly human consciousness sees this Martian line as a fallen race that truly does not belong here, as an antichrist impulse that is possessed and obsessed with repeating their mistakes here that they made on Mars. And once the true humans of the Earth did materialize, they were horrified with what they saw. Mars had been recreated on the Earth, and the Arctic which at the time was the polar magnetic match to Mars, had become their base. At this time, Atlantis, the true ruling continent, containing the true impulse of humanity and the genuine line of human beings, was manifesting out of the sea. The true line of earthly humans were beginning to appear on Earth on the ruling continent of Atlantis. This was, of course, a threat to the Martians. And the Martians, more than anything, wanted to control Atlantis. And they pushed to get control of the continent from Antarctica, which was their base. And they were limited for half of the Atlantean period to Antarctica as the Atlantean continent slowly took form. The leaders of Atlantis were the graduates of Mars, or the souls that had successfully completed the initiation of Mars in their prior incarnations. This is called the Melchizedek Order, or in the Edgar Cayce work, the Amelius Group, or the followers of the Law of One, though they came through Venus as a solar force, as mentioned. Thus, they were, in a sense, battling with their old selves, 
or the exact impulse that they had faced on Mars in their previous lives. So, there they stood face to face with their own prior darkness. Only now these dark forces had somehow bucked the system and forced their way into the new cycle of development on Earth. From the creation stance, this means that there are two lines. One line was of the ape, and the other was from Eve, or Venus. The line from the egg of Eve, or the Mary soul, or Venus, was and is the true form of the earth. The line that was created of the ape woman lacks the impulse that was etched into Mary's egg as she rests in the etheric astral stasis above the earth in the higher stream. Of course, eventually, these Mars forces began to notice that they were falling behind in some areas. Not being of the earth naturally, it took immense efforts to complete what genuine earth humans could achieve, and thus they began to try to force their way into the genetic stream of the true Atlanteans, and thus the streams became mixed. More can be revealed about this chapter of the past at a later date. We just wish to outline the reality of these two streams and the impulses behind them to illustrate to you that there are in fact two different impulses on the planet today with two very different origins and two very different paths forward. We share this with you today because at certain points in a civilization's development this truth is revealed. Humanity must come face to face with the complexities of their beginnings, and they must choose which path will perpetuate within their own soul. Humanity must now choose what stream they will serve. Will they serve the Christ nature or the Antichrist nature? This is each human being's choice. And they've made this choice in many lives before this one, and they will choose again now. Our interpretation of history, of our development as human beings, reflects the stream that we are currently serving. The lower stream that is associated with Mars cannot be eliminated. It will continue for one more cycle in a realm that is not in touch with organic life, but is in fact behind the black veil of the dark elements that were summoned on Mars so long ago. The higher stream will again rise above the Earth in its natural fashion and emerge again in a Jupiter life. Thus we live side by side with these forces, with dark forces, but we are not ruled by them. We are ruled by the force within our own hearts. And if that force is Christ, then we are saved and we rise with the natural rhythm of the cosmos into new beginnings. We move with the sun and with the grand symphony of the stars and spheres that have contributed to our existence. Lastly, the escapist impulse to return to Mars is a continuation of the impulse to leave Mars so long ago. It is a luciferic impulse that fears the sun, that fears Christ. This is such a deep fear that they themselves do not understand it. They only sense it as sheer survival. And in their being there is an echo, an echo of Mars, an echo of the destruction of Mars that they believe will happen again here and now. And this is that they fear the sun will explode or expand and destroy the Earth. In fact, the increase of the magnetic field of the sun is a natural occurrence, and it happens slowly as the planet loses matter or becomes lighter in density. Eventually, many, many years from now, the Earth will become so light in its form that the moon returns to the Earth. This will parallel the time to when it was ejected in Lemuria, 
and will represent coming full circle in that larger cycle. The sun too will reabsorb the earth, but at that time it will be perceived entirely differently than we can imagine today. And so, the idea that humanity needs to planet hop, colonize, and run from the sun is a delusion. It is a sad, poetic allegory to the nature of this group, the Mars group, that cannot align with nature, that cannot harmonize with life itself, a group that is always running, always seeking control, always on the outside seeking to break in, but not truly knowing how. The anti-stream, or the Antichrist stream, that is always seeking to colonize a planet before it can truly come to life on its own. The group that cannot even recognize that a planet has a soul and a life of its own to be expressed and even lived by other beings. A life that is destined to exist and develop without their presence. To enter a planet in its corpse phase, or during a prelaya, and attempt to bring it to life is a form of necromancy. It is an evil act. It is an attempt to control a dead thing. To attempt to control a dead thing, such as Mars, as it is currently in its prelaya, as it is currently a corpse, is an evil thing. It is black magic of the most prolific order, of a planetary order. It is necromancy of a cosmic planetary order. And what they plan to awaken there is long gone. She passed when it was her time. What they think is there is not accessible to them. It does not exist. And what does exist now is worse than what can be imagined. What exists now is the kind of thing that rules the underworld. Forces that are dark and were contained, and with time through certain natural events were planned to be removed from this dimension. What is communicating with them is quite simply not what it says it is. It poses as the goddess, but is inhuman, evil, and can only be held in machinery.